Everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Morton. Hello, hello, hello. So, Morton, for folks that don't know you, who are you? Where are you? And what do you do? My name is Morton, and I'm uh, calling in from Denmark. Uh, I'm in Microsoft MVP. Just uh, recently, I, I got uh, to become an MVP on February first, so it's uh, pretty new for me. Uh, daily, I'm a cloud and security architect working with you know, medium-sized enterprise customers, uh, mostly with headquarters in Denmark, but a lot of international customers as well. Well, I know that they Microsoft split out what was the enterprise mobility, and there's a few, some MVPs that stayed as enterprise mobility, some mm. that moved over to security, and some yeah. that were made dual MVPs. So yeah. I guess it all depends on like the what, what the focus. So what do you talk about, write about, speak on on a regular basis? Well, I was uh, I became an MVP in security, so I'm a. I'm a, you can say, a native security guy from the very beginning. Uh, I was actually nominated uh, on January uh, the 6th, uh, and it was announced on February the 1st. So it, it was uh, really uh, fast uh, through the system and uh, really happy about that. So, but my passion is around the Azure side and, uh, and the, the monitoring side, the logging, and I do a lot of uh, talk and uh, blogs around that as well so uh, i for example in in april uh, i i did the uh, 19 blogs uh, around the whole uh, new uh, azure lock uh, analytics v2 uh, with both the lock ingestion api and also how to do all the things with the ama uh, so that's my passion so uh, but uh, besides that i'm also working on the whole defender stack uh, so mm -hmm. You know the security side of the M365. Yep. Uh, so uh, so it's both Azure and and the M365 that, uh, but focusing on the security side and the uh, and the logging. Uh, that's my passion. You know. So I've been involved over the years. Uh, it, I used to do uh, independent research and so partner with a local university and do things, mm. and primarily into the Microsoft 365 stack mm. and you know that mm. that world. And yeah. year after year after year, for the last at least decade, you know, the number one concern, the number one focus of customers is security. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and so that's it. And I look, mm. I go back, my cloud experience actually started mm. back in 2000, in 2001, mm. where mm. I worked with the company that we built a, uh, a dedicated cloud service around mm. collaboration technology. And okay. then, I mean, the issues, that's where SaaS was new, new terminology mm. in the cloud. And, and all, everybody was concerned about security and uh, of their mm. systems and accessibility and, and, and management of those things. And it's amazing that, that those concerns have yeah. not changed in all that time. <laughs> that's right. Well, how I see it is that for me, it is very important when I work with my customers is to to actually work with them on three different tracks. And actually, just to give you a little insight to my background, uh, back in 2016, I sold a, a big uh, company uh, that was a, a managed service provider doing an uh, operation of, uh, of customers. And I got in that process to learn about how to build up a big company and you know, build an organization, build the processes around this, and of course, getting the technology in place to, to support these uh, customers. Mm -hmm. And I use that knowledge today. So for me, I'm a, you can say, a, a different, uh, you know, technical guy, because I also know my way around, around processes and also building up the organization. So for me, when I deal with and talk with uh, businesses today, for me, I have three tracks. You know, you have a technical track where you get the, all the security stuff up and running and the new platform up and running, but I also address the processes and getting the organization maturity uh, up and running. So for me, you know, technology by itself will not enable, it, it will just be the enabler, but it will not make sure that 
that things run uh, 365 days a year. So, so that's how I talk into this. And I think it's very important that you address all three things. Uh, but, but I love the technology and the, uh, all the footprint that Microsoft has, has gotten over time. And, uh, and they have really become really a mature partner uh, for people uh, when uh, talking about the security. So, mm -hmm. but uh, for me, I really also like what I see, for example, with some of the uh, documentation around the processes and uh, how do we adopt this as an organization. So I try to address uh, all three tracks. Yep. Well, I always, I do like to ask, because you, you mentioned just becoming an MVP. Yeah. Um, what was that? So what was your pathway to becoming an MVP? Yeah. I mean, like. Yeah. What led to you being, uh, uh, you know, uh, got introduced to the program? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my what I've done is that I have been working very much with the product teams uh, for numerous years, uh, working on the private preview program. So that's actually how I started to learn the the team behind this, uh, both in Israel, where a lot of the security guys are located, but also in Redmond and, and also in, in, in India. So I've been working with them for uh, two, uh, three years, uh, giving feedback and uh, having meetings with them and discussions with them. So I've done a lot of that. I, I really passionate about, you know, if I find something myself or my customers tell me this can be better and, and just giving feedback back to them in a constructive uh, manner. And so, and then I was actually, uh, you know, the, the team behind the private preview program asked me, you should start to do some more blogging around this to get, you know, the, the methods out. Uh, and I did tons of, of, of that work and, uh, and actually that kind of accelerated this. Uh, so I was doing a lot of internal feedback, you know, to Microsoft and, and I'm also now sharing a lot of things uh, and doing you know, uh, you know, speaking around the world and 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 uh, you know, sharing uh, externally, and and that is how I like it uh, to to do a lot of feedback and and help people. And as an example, I was just in India <clears throat> two weeks ago, and there were 950 people at the conference, and one fifth of those were students, and a lot of them came up to me to ask. How did you do it? What was your career path to this? Uh, how? What do I need to do to become an MVP? And uh, uh, what should I focus on in my career and all these things? So a lot of, you know, I really like talking with people and, and trying to help them because I was there, you know, 30 years ago uh, when I started working with this. Yeah, that's, uh, so too, I've been in tech for 32 years now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And one of my favorite things, like in the late nineties, early two thousands, I started working with a couple of universities with uh, the university of California, Berkeley and mm -hmm. with Stanford with a number of groups. I worked with a couple of professors at both and would talk to students kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like what's yeah. the, the, the path? What are all the job yeah. opportunities? Like you get yeah. an engineering yeah. degree or you get a business degree or a marketing yeah. degree yeah. around that, but, it, but you have a passion for tech. What mm. are the opportunities? What can you go and do? And so yeah. just trying to explain some of the fundamentals of that. And I tell this to my own adult kids as well, yeah. in, you know, yeah. four different areas that they're focused on. Um, mm. But that um, uh, my biggest recommendation for people is to write, write about your journey. You don't mm. have to be a prolific writer, but if you're, it's almost like you're documenting your journey as you're uh, learning you know, kind mm. of learn out loud, share yeah. what it is that you're mm. going through. Yeah. Don't, don't be, make the mistake of, uh, of reading what other people have written, be like, ah, well, they've already covered this. I don't need to mm. write about it because your mm. experience is unique. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah. so by writing about it, um, yeah. that gets you like interacting with people in the community, um, asking questions, answering questions. I think mm. what stood out to me about from what you described is probably first and foremost, since you can't nominate yourself to become an MVP, you mm. have to have an, another MVP or a Microsoft person nominate yeah. you. Yeah. And so 
it will only benefit you to work with Microsoft people, ask questions, yeah. answer questions, yeah. exactly. be exactly. a resource <laughs> yeah. for them. Yeah. And, and that's, uh, it, I think it's all about sharing and, and, you know, sharing your feedback and sharing the knowledge, uh, help people uh, and uh, to, to grow and, and answer questions and uh, and also be uh, realistic about things and, and try to, to motivate people as well uh, in case. Uh, so for me personally, when I was uh, nominated and waiting for this, uh, I was uh, it was uh, terrible for me. You know, it's like when you are waiting for the renewal, will I be accepted or will I not be accepted? And it was uh, really uh, hard because suddenly you you really want to to do this and uh, and. And for me, it was uh, very exciting uh, when I got that information. And uh, and, and to be a, a, recently, I was uh, being nominated by the Azure Monitor team uh, for an Azure MVP, and and I realized that I couldn't get a second one uh, because uh, we had to wait for for this uh, uh, re renewal. Uh, and for me, that it will be July next year. So yeah. uh, I have to wait, and hopefully, I will become an MVP again. Well, you know, I always tell people, it's like, so I honestly, I don't really think about the renewal. I'm not just like, it would be mm. fantastic. But yeah. I, what I say, and I'm sure you feel the exact same way. It's like, look, I would do the things that I do regardless of, of whether or not exactly. I am an yeah. MVP. Yeah. Yeah. It's just part of my DNA yeah. that I but do. I think, the, the I think it's a little special the first year because you don't know am I doing enough or uh, what, what will be, the, the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the line where you do it. So, but I fully agree with you. If I'm not being renewed, I'll just continue doing what I'm doing because it's so much fun. And, uh, and uh, like I was saying, I try to come around and, and meet the people. And I, I also invite my family to join. So we actually make a small trip out of it. Last year, for example, we went to Israel and uh, I had a couple of days down there uh, having, you know, 10, 12 meetings uh, during two days. And we also got to swim in the Dead Sea and go to Jerusalem and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. we try to make a, a family a project uh, uh, to visit these uh, countries. Uh, yeah. I, my daughter especially would like to go with me to India because we want to go to visit uh, Mount uh, Everest and fly out there. Oh, uh, wow, yeah. Go to Nepal. Uh, uh, yeah. So so we have small things we want to try. For. So again, meeting the people and, and getting to know them. And uh, that is important for me and, and, uh, and, and learning how I can help. Uh, and uh, what are their challenges and uh, how can we uh, do better? Uh, yeah. I think that's important. Uh, for example, I've just built a, a new PowerShell module uh, that will, it has actually been downloaded, I think 21,000 times already. Wow. And I launched it in mid April and it will help customers migrate uh, to the new log ingestion API uh, inside Log Analytics. So, and and I've been working very closely with the PMs uh, in, in the pipeline team and, and the DCR team as well, uh, see how we can do things and, and make it uh, easier for people to, to do this transition. So I've learned so much about that, uh, you know, and a lot of things uh, besides the technical side that you have to learn, like uh, GitHub and uh, how do you do a markdown uh, language for readme files and yep. how do you set up the documentation and how do you measure the number of downloads and how do you publish scripts to PowerShell gallery and stuff like that. So I've learned so much over the last couple of, uh, of months uh, and it has been so much fun. Well, that's, uh, I, I think you've kind of tapped into the, 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 the secret of it. It's, it's, uh, Again, I, I say it's the work out loud, but it's the, you know, you want to collaborate with people. You want to, um, you know, yeah. connect with people and, uh, and, and help them and share what you know. And mm. I, I learn faster that way. It sounds like you have the same philosophy. Like we learn more when we're engaged in and asking questions and connecting yeah. with people. You yeah. Know, and, yeah. and so yeah. that's the kind of, uh, that's the secret to certainly to becoming an MVP is it's, yeah. it's the connections that you build mm. and it has to be, I know that there are people that are, 
very introverted that are MVPs and they do things mm -hmm. and they're not as much into the social scene around mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, but you still have to make connections mm -hmm. and yeah. 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 So, well, Morton, I really appreciate your, your time today talking to getting to know you. Hopefully we'll be able to, uh, uh, you know, uh, hook up some time over here in the U S if you do a family trip yeah. over here and you're looking for suggestions, especially yeah, the Western U S that's kind of my realm. Uh, yeah. But you know, happy to uh, to help out and hopefully see you at the MVP Summit next year. But for folks that want to get in touch, where are you the most active in social? Where can they find you? Yeah, so I will. I'm mostly on LinkedIn. Uh, that's where I am, and uh, you can search for me on Morton uh, Waltorf Knudsen, and I can provide the link as well. And uh, and uh, that's where I'm uh, sharing mostly. And on Twitter, I'm Knudsen Morton DK. And, uh, so those are the typical uh, places that I share things. I, I have all, my own blog. It's mortonknudsen.net. And uh, I'm sharing uh, things on there. Uh, but I'm mostly on LinkedIn. That's where you can find me most of the times. Excellent. Well, I'll have, of course, all of uh, Morton's links that are in yeah. the uh, in the bio that are in the the, uh, the video as well on YouTube as well as on the blog. So, Morton, yeah. really appreciate thank your time you. today. Thank you, Christian. It's really great to be uh, here. So thank you very much. Wow.